Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, last week we looked at uh, force and we've effectively worked out that uh, the unit of force is the Newton and it comes from mass being attracted to uh, the gravitational pull of the earth. So we've worked that out that that's how we define force and force is used in mechanics not just when we're opposing gravitational force, but it can be used in um, cable tensions, it can be used in steelwork forces, etc. etc. And with a, when we're measuring things generally in engineering, we're interested in two different types of quantities. One is what we call scalar quantities. For example, if I uh, use this pair of scales here to measure the weight of a tin of beans, this is simply telling me that uh, it has a certain, what we call magnitude or size. But it's not actually telling me which direction the tin of beans is actually going. I mean, I, we know that it's going down, but the actual scales is not telling me that. In forces we need to know not only the, the size of the force or the magnitude of the force but we also need to know its direction. For example in this spanner I've got a piece of string here and if I pull that spanner with a certain force it moves in a certain direction. If I change the direction of the force, the spanner will move in that direction. So if I pull the, pull the force that way, the spanner goes that way. When we have a number of forces pulling the spanner, for example, if I have two forces like this, and say they are 90 degrees apart, so that's 90 degrees there, if I pull that spanner with an equal force, it goes in this direction down here. If I have two forces, like that one and that one, and pull them, try and pull them with equal force, the spanner goes that way. So we need to have a way of adding up these forces to find what we call the resultant force. And there are a couple of ways we can do that. We can do it graphically or mathematically. And we did it a little bit last week when we did trigonometry, we did it mathematically. And if I have, say, two forces, I can represent it with what we call a vector. A vector is simply a line which has a certain length and a certain direction. So I can scale this off down to three, four, five, six, seven. That could represent, say, seven newtons horizontally. This one could represent two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five newtons, say, at approximately 45 degrees to the horizontal about 45 degrees and then this one could be about 60 degrees uh, and that's a one two three newtons so we've got, these are called vectors so a vector represents magnitude or size of the force and its direction now if I use proper scaling on say a piece of graph paper I could say well if I have a force of say six newtons in that direction. So I'll say one centimeter is one newton. So that's six newtons. One, two, three, four. No, it isn't. It's five newtons. I'll make it six. So there's six newtons. One, two, three, four, five, six newtons. If I have another force down here, let's say just drawing that one in. That's at 90 degrees. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 newtons. I can work out uh, if I draw a what we call a parallelogram opposite those two forces like that just put a couple of dotted lines in there and if I now measure the diagonal length if I draw the diagonal in here this is what we call the resultant force. If I measure that in uh, centimetres, that comes to approximately 13.4 or 134 mil that way. So I've done that by what we call by uh, scalar measurement or by sorry by graphical measurement using a scale here in this case it's one square per newton okay right so we know from last week though that uh, we can get a much more accurate result of this length and indeed this direction this angle because in engineering we need to know the angle of the force, the direction of the force, and we need to know the magnitude of the force. We know from last week we can work this out using, we can work this length out using Pythagoras theorem. And we can work this out using a trigonometrical uh, solution as well. So if that was the angle, this would be the opposite side. This is always the hypotenuse, and that one's going to be the adjacent side. So from Pythagoras, we know that uh, twelve and six are going to be our B and C. So we could say that. How am I doing for time? I've got two minutes. We've got a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So the figures you're given are 12 and 6. So a squared, which is the hypotenuse, is 6 squared plus 12 squared equals 36 plus 144. So A equals the square root of that, and that comes to, let's have a look, 36 squared plus, well, sorry, 36 plus 144, the square root of that comes to 13.41. So we can see there that uh, that's a much more accurate way of working that out. So in the second clip, we'll develop this a little bit more, trying to find this angle as well. Okay, thanks very much.